Oh, hey, what? You back for more tips and tricks? Well, how about this? Your number one tip. If you're born with ten fingers, you need to die with ten fingers. Well, wait. That doesn't sound right. You can die with all ten fingers. You're dead. Okay, wait, wait. Scratch that. If you walk into the shop with ten fingers, you need to walk out with a shop with ten fingers. Well, wait a second. You can be carrying them to the hospital. That's not right. Ah! Just don't cut off your fingers. Tip number one. Tip number two. Don't throw tools. If your workbench is flat, you can use a hand plane clamped up level it to even up the legs on your chairs. Get in there. If you have to leave your work for a bit while turning green, wrap a plastic bag around it. It'll prevent air movement and evaporation and reduce the chance of warpage and cracking. Like all your other tools, dividers are meant to be sharpened because they need to scratch and cut wood all the time. But you only sharpen the outside, never the inside. Check your squares often. Removing less than an inch on the board, thick shavings are a lot easier than fine sawing. All of woodworking, no matter if it's turning, carving, handwork, or machine work, is all about understanding how blades interact with wood. I'm in a situation right now where I need to continue cutting this very thin piece of wood right here, and if I put any pressure outwards to it, it will cause a vibration. So understanding that, I'm going to shift from a pushing cut where I have to rub the bevel and press out a little bit, to a scraping cut where I'm just slightly touching the fibers. But understanding wood fibers, I'm going basically across the grain as a wood presents right here. It'd just be like taking your scraper, your card scraper, and turning it and going directly across the grain. You, it will cut just fine, but it gets a little bit fuzzy. It's not the best cut. It would be better if I could skew that scraper ever so slightly, and it would take a scraping slice instead of just scratching off the top surface. But I'm going to be using my bowl gouge. It has wings on the side. If I just place it sideways at a slightly negative angle so it's scraping off the inner side, I would be just like taking my card scraper and going across the grain. But because I understand my blade, I also understand there is a curve right here. So if I pre can pre somehow present this tip on this side slightly below center, that will be angled to the wood and it will give me a skewing cut. Let's check it out. Presenting the curved section slightly below, slightly touching the wood, and what do you get? You get shavings, not sawdust. If you sand your workbench top with a very coarse grit, it'll make it nice and grippy for when you're doing hand tool woodworking. Apply a little Danish oil to the top of that, and it'll prevent glue drips from sticking too much. Starting out your bowl turnings between centers will allow you to adjust so that you can get the grain just right. Because of the extreme set of the teeth of a coping saw, meaning how far the tooth is bent one way or the other, you can use it to turn 90 degrees off of a straight cut. All you need to do is keep your pressure to one side, that way it only uses one side of the tooth and it'll go, then go straight across. Cheap dollar store silicon spatulas are the absolute best glue spreaders. They're soft enough to get an even coat, and after the glue dries, all you gotta do is peel it off. When using a carving axe, try to work with your arm swinging leg back and off the far side of your bench. That way, any erratic blows will hit into the bench and not your leg, and also try to keep your, your swing below your upper hand. If sawing hurts, stop. Saw stop. Store your CA glue in the fridge. Just don't mix it up with your other condiments. To your spouse, that $90 chisel looks exactly like the $9 chisel. I'll just leave that intellectual nugget right there. You should lift weights as much as you can to improve your saw stop's performance. 
Here's a tip for woodworking dummies. Work hard, save up, and then hire somebody that knows what they're doing. On a natural edge bowl where you had to remove the bark, use a wire wheel going from the center out, uh, going with the grain to give you a nice crisp edge, and do this before you get it to your final thickness. That way your entry will have a nice crisp edge too. You know that $90 chisel? If your spouse really believes it's $9, they will use it to remove the bumper sticker off of their rusty truck. Karma's a bitch. If you can identify the species of wood you've been working with by the color of your boogers, you need to work on your dust collection game. If you need a drill bit and you don't have the right size, you can always sharpen the four edges of a nail and use that as a temporary drill bit. Just chuck it up in your electric drill. You find a North style adjuster on many hand planes. These allow you to twist it to progress the plane blade in and out and you can also move it left and right to adjust the camber of the blade. I've always found that left and right to be very fragile. It's a lot easier for me to shove my fingers in there and use the fat to kind of wedge it left or right to get micro adjusters. That's also justification for my diet. Fatty fingers, better adjusters. You want to make sure your bench is dead flat. That way you can use the weight of the spine of your back saw to make sure your cuts are dead plumb. Just make sure you can get it balanced. The first step of troubleshooting any of your tools is to sharpen them. Tree hunting never goes out of season. No matter how you analyze it, in this woodworking craft, mansplaining makes absolutely no sense. Because if you actually believe you're doing some good, then you probably believe those people are crazy. So why would you antagonize somebody fanatical about sharp tools and slowly dissecting material? If, when you find yourself in that situation where you've got to mansplain, I suggest you just bow your head very submissively and in soothing undertones, just say you're sorry and back away until your pseudo-intellect is requested. If you use a jig in your sharpening and you absolutely positively have to have a micro bevel on either your chisels or your plane blades, you can always just throw a business card down on your stones to raise the wheel up a tad bit to get just that tiny micro bevel. The semi-gloss sheen on a beeswax finish can be brought that back to life with a shoe shine brush. Nice. The proper way to hand a knife off to somebody is with a blade in the wet of your hand, handle first. That way if they're a true idiot and they drag it out, nobody's going to get hurt. You want a nice shiny saw plate because if you can hold it balanced because of the weight, you'll prefer it plumb right here and you can line up the reflection in the saw plate and when it lines up with the other side, you know you have a perfect 90 degrees this way and if you ever get a 45, the reflection comes out as 90. A smooth tool rest is your best tool rest. So file it often. Because wood is very weak going with a grain, putting a screw into the end grain where each one of the threads is actually severing the fibers is basically just making a screw decoration. It's not going to hold anything. Blue tape will keep your pencils and other tools from rolling off the bench. Thin flexible marking knives are simply for show-offs. How many times are you cutting a dovetail whose curve is thinner than the thickness of the blade? I only know a few people that can do that one. Get a marking knife with a little meat to it. That way you can use the side corners to clean out the insides of dovetails. You can also do a little whittling with them and they make excellent box openers. Get one with a little substance. You gain a lot more flexibility. Heat is your sandpaper's worst enemy. So whether you're turning on the lathe or using a power tool, just use a light touch and a slow progress. Stacking your wood blocks randomly to dry improves airflow and provides a home for geckos. Buying quality sandpaper is a lot cheaper in the long run because not only are the grains more evenly so you don't have to sand as much, but they just last a lot longer. If you use blue tape in conjunction with your marking wheel, you don't have to score as deep a line to make your mark and you don't have to use, take as deep a shaving 
when you use your woodworking eraser to get rid of the line. Ikea is the largest hardwood buyer in the world. So all that crap that ends up out on the curb in five years is great cheap raw material. Blue tape reduces backside blowout as much with pan tools as it does with power tools. When turning green, tighten your tailstock often. A chisel is probably the most dangerous tool in our woodworking arsenal. As such, it needs to be considered a two-handed tool. Either both hands are on this tool, with the front hand providing direction, the back hand providing propulsion, or one hand on this tool and the other hand on another tool interacting with it. That way, if you're head tapping on the back, there's no way you can get hurt. Nuts are the best shop snack, because you can't eat them too fast, and who cares where the shells go? It's easier to maintain an edge than to create an edge. So hone often. Putting your sawdust and shavings on your lawn is a bad idea because as it decomposes, it will really leach out the nitrogen. It's best to compost it first. Walnut oil, the kind of stuff you buy next to the olive oil in the grocery store for putting on your salads, is a very traditional oil finish for furniture. Plus it's dirt cheap. And if you use it on bowls and stuff like that, you can consider it food safe because it is a food. Just put on a very generous coat and wipe off the excess. It will take a few extra days to dry, but it is one of the only natural oils that will fully cure with enough time. Pretty. Trees can't read. So it's really unlikely they know what brand of tool you're using to butcher them. So just sharpen the things and get to work. Fat fingers are a saw's micro adjuster. All you gotta do is squeeze a little bit and they'll move it over ever so slightly. So eat accordingly. If you've got a box and a trash can, then you also have a finishing station. If you're having problems with nails splitting your wood, try blunting the tip a little bit. It'll turn it from a wedging action into a cutting action. No split. <laughs> Science has proven that cursing is a great pain reliever. So while it might be rude and inappropriate, sometimes it just feels good. These new style mustard bottles have become my favorite glue bottles because the caps are self-sealing and they seem to put out the perfect amount of glue. A little sawdust will help clean up oil spills. Just sweep it up before the cat finds it. Wood grain lies. You might think you know which direction the grain is going, but it always feel. Pain will tell you the real direction, but I suggest you keep tweezers handy. Well, there you go. 62 more tips and tricks from Worth the Effort Woodworking. Some of them were pretty good, some of them were kind of lame, some of them were just jokes, people. But there were 62 of them. Hey, if you like this kind of content, please consider subscribing our channel, checking out our other playlists. I really do put emphasis on woodworking education and stuff like my classroom series and the standalone videos. There's something out there for everybody. And also, if you want to help support the channel, visit our website. Uh, we sell a lot of swag, such as hats, t-shirts with a lot of my original artwork on them. And I also sell some tools and uh, tools that we produce along with a lot of the woodwork we make, those bowls you saw in the video. A lot of those are on our website, and every little sale helps out, helps me break away time to make these kinds of videos. And I know some of y'all out there are complaining already. False advertising! The title says 63 tips. Well, here's your last one. It is always worth the effort to learn. Create stuff and share it with others. Y'all be safe and have fun.